Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you how to serialize your own type using the XML serializer. So I have a simple class here called class one, and we have three properties and we're going to serialize these properties using XML serialization. So I'm just going to put a save method in here to save this uh, instance to file. So let's do public void save and it's going to accept the file name. Okay, and we're just going to declare a file stream and we're going to specify our file name and then we're going to specify file mode create. So the difference between create and create new is that create will automatically overwrite a file if it exists and whereas create new an exception will raise it means that it has to create a new file it can't um, overwrite an existing one okay so we're gonna declare our XML serializer and I'm just gonna call this XML and you can specify the type that needs to be serialized by using type of or this dot get type. We're going to do type of just because it's a bit more expressive. You can actually see the type name. Okay, and after that, all we have to do is specify XML dot serialize. And we're going to pass in our stream, of course so it knows where to write the XML and the object which is the current instance okay so why don't we test out this um, method here to see how it works I think I already have some code yeah so right here I'm just creating or declaring a class assigning to it and I'm gonna save it so I'm just gonna take this public out of here so you can see what happens so we're saving to hey.xml, which is going to be in our application startup directory. So let's run it. And we're going to get an exception. And the exception just says that the class needs to be public. The uh, type that's being serialized, that is. So by default, your class is internal, meaning that any logic outside the uh, assembly cannot access it. So we're going to have to make it public and try this again and it's going to say something else it says that it contains a property which has no public setter so all of your properties need a public setter with it I think there's an exception I'll show you that later so let's go back to class one we are already in there actually make sure that this has a public setter okay so now it actually was able to save successfully to file let's take a look at it All right, so we're just going to open this up in Notepad. And let's just take a look at this. I'm going to just zoom in with it. Uh, I, I keep trying to zoom in with this text editor using control and scroll, but it doesn't work out. So um, basically, this is what the XML looks like. It says age 10, male, false, just no, just normal tags, really and this master tag here and then the uh, version of XML with some uh, I don't know this is like some sort of schema information here from the looks of it uh, we don't really want that name to be formatted like that with its own tags um, we want name to be an attribute I would think that would be a bit more elegant but I don't really know so but we're gonna do it anyways XML attribute so we're just gonna apply this attribute to um, I don't think I need to do that. I can. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. So we're just going to apply this to name so that name is going to appear different or be formatted differently in the um, output file. So let's take a look at that again. And of course, I close the directory that I'm working with. Um, do that all the time just to have it. So we're going to take a look at hey. And you can now see that name is an attribute of class one. So it's right there. 
All right, so I'm going to load a method or create a method that allows us to load this back into memory. So basically, you want to make this a static method um, so that you can actually retrieve an instance without already having an, an instance created. As well, you don't want to put this in a constructor because this is something that can potentially raise an exception. And I feel or I think it's like a rule of thumb that you really shouldn't put stuff in a parameter parameterless constructor that can raise an exception. The uh, the person using your code should be pretty confident that it's not going to raise any exception. So definitely put your stuff that uh, has logic where you're loading from file in some sort of static method. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a return type. So our return type is class one, and we're just going to call this load from file just to keep it more standard because I see a lot of a lot of names like this in the .NET framework so we're going to specify our file name and we're going to do the same thing up here I'm just going to use this code up as a template code except we're going to change create to open okay and instead of calling XML serialize we're going to call XML deserialize and just pass in our stream and then we are going to return it and cast it of course to class 1 and that's pretty much all we need to do so let's go to the program class and just uh, load this into this object here so we're going to access our static method, which does not seem to exist. So I've done something wrong here. I'm going to mark this as static. OK, and we're just going to do load from file. And we're going to specify hey.xml. I believe that was the file name. And I'm just going to break here. And we're going to run it, take a look at class 1. And you can see that we have all the right values here 10 false Brian and if you want to verify it for some reason you can just go into your debug directory and open up your file in a text editor so we have 10 false and the name as an attribute Brian okay so I'm going to show you how to ignore properties so that they don't get serialized. So let's go back to the program class and just revert it back to what it was. Okay, and there it is. And we're just going to go into this cl this class here and ignore mail. So I think it's XML ignore. Yes, it is. So I can serialize it. It's going to ignore the mail property and I close the debug directory again so we're going to open this up with notepad and there it is so what was it it was the mail property that I ignored yeah that's totally gone so it's only age there okay so I'm just gonna consciously not close this window because I know I'm gonna have to open it again and let's go back here so something else I was going to show you yeah you can mark this as private if you want to because it's no longer going to be serialized and I just ran that with an error um, yeah it's still going to be serialized it doesn't need to nope that is uh, that's very interesting so apparently you can't do that even if you're ignoring the property Oh, you know what I did? I put the private um, accessor on the wrong property. There it is. So we're going to run it, and it's still going to work because it's ignoring this property.